This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. How can a young man keep his ways pure? Great question. A tiger has the answer. This is Wretched Radio. No, not me. I'm not a tiger. I'm a pussycat, which means I'm allergic to myself. Tim Challey's writing an article titled, It's Far Too Easy to Buy a Tiger. Might just help you if you struggle with sin. From our Canadian friend, who's probably sitting in his house right now because everybody has been locked in their home and cellophane in. They are duct taped. They can't come out to play in Canada. He writes, there are a couple of problems with welcoming a tiger as a pet. You ever seen that? There's even, I think, like Netflix shows, people who own pet tigers. And then we read about these people in the news. Today, a man had his arm bitten off by his pet tiger. Shocked that this would happen. Mm, Shouldn't have been shocked. The first is that people welcome them into their homes when they're just little cubs. Tiny, helpless, dependent, adorable, who hasn't at one time or another had their heartstrings tugged by the pitiful mewing and playful bouncing of a baby tiger. Second, tigers are undomesticated. They have not, over the course of many successive generations, been bred away from ferocity and toward docility. Though they may share ancestry with the common tabby, the family tree diverged. The best of them is just a few generations removed from the rainforest, from the natural setting where to survive they must be, in the words of the poet, red in tooth and claw. But not when they're cubs. You bring it in. Shelley's writes, welcoming a tiger into the home serves as an apt metaphor for welcoming a sin into your life. The sins you permit to enter the doors of your lives, often very small, far removed from sin in its full form, and as a day-old tiger is from its fully grown father. Yet, sins grow up just like tigers do. They gain size, strength, ferocity, just as it does not take long for a 20-pound cub to grow into a 400-pound adult. It doesn't take long for a wandering eye to grow into adultery. For a grumbling heart to grow into theft, for an angry spirit to grow into murder. As a tiger club is a ferocious predator in the making, what appears to be a mere peccadillo in its seed form will become a home-wrecking, life-altering act of depravity. Count on it. Now, maybe you're saying, well, that's kind of threatening. Yeah, it is, because we don't want to be naive about what we're doing. You don't want to entertain something and it turns into be a ferocious sin that devours you, wrecks your life, causes you to lose your job, your family, your kids, your reputation. Let's be wise about these things. But I would add this. There's just a better way. I'm telling you, the joys of denying flesh. How many times have we heard here on Wretched Radio from people, or perhaps you have had these sentiments yourself, I hate this sin, I hate it. Okay, Lord, help me to fight it, which, by the way, is a very passive prayer. There's nothing wrong with it. You can ask God for power, but he also tells you, get on it, mortify it, kill it, strangle it, cut it off, starve it, be holy, so to the Spirit. Don't deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow me. You got to do stuff. Don't just, Lord, I don't want to watch porn again, so just tell me to not watch porn next time because I feel really, really bad. No, kill it. Because it's better. And it feels better. Oh, I know why you watch porn. Because you think it feels good. I'm telling you, it feels better to deny a sinful craving and to consume holiness. You will feel better. I promise you. Because that's the way that it works. Tim Challies. And then there's the problem of domestication. The sins we permit into our lives appear to be harmless when we first usher them in and are easily convinced that we can contain them. Like no one welcomes a tiger into their home thinking it'll someday devour them. Nope, certain. Not my tiger. I've got a handle on this kitty cat. I'm just going to love it. And it'll be better. And in much the same way, a sinful heart is convinced it can look at those not-quite-pornographic pictures without being drawn into the full thing that it can be emotionally attached to another person without eventually committing adultery. 
that it can dabble in gambling without going all in. The sinful heart, like the owning of the tiger, thinks it can contain the ferocity. That it can be the one who masters its strength, who subjugates its power, who persuades it to only go this far but no further. You're going to lose to a tiger. You're going to lose to sin. Chalice. I wonder if the man who has welcomed a tiger into his home is truly surprised in that brief moment, seeing it pounce and feeling its teeth close around his neck. He brought it in. He raised it up. He saw it get big and strong and powerful. He saw its claws form and its teeth grow. He knew its craving for death, for blood, for meat. It should have been no surprise that one day it turned on him. For while he may have been its owner... He was never its master. We are never the masters of any sin. We introduce them to our lives on their terms, not on ours. Once we've welcomed them in, it is just a matter of time before they grow big enough to turn on us, big enough to kill us, and big enough to do what sin always does. Do not let a tiger into your life. Find the joy of barring the door and killing it if it comes in. And please send your emails to idea at wretched.org. All right, this next one comes from Cassandra, who says she gets very frustrated and quick to anger when people let her down, and she wants to be slower to anger, so how can she react better in those circumstances? Uh, let me just, Cassandra, join the club. <laughs> Join the Pride Monster Club. Now, that's the sin behind it, by the way. When, when we, we just, mmm, we think that we shouldn't be treated this way. We didn't deserve that. Somebody cut us off. They're rude. And how dare they say anything to upset the king? That's, that's our wicked heart. And we all have that. Now, here's the great news. Oodles, oh, hope. Oodles, tons of hope. God can fix that inside of you. This, he's done it a billion times because he does this for every believer. Increasingly, uh, he changes us and he does it through a certain means. If, if your issue is anger, there are great biblical counseling books on anger. I, I think John MacArthur wrote a book. The one that's coming to mind is Angry No More. Um, or is it Angry About Nothing? Something like that. John Mac just do John MacArthur Anger. And what you might get is a lot of people complaining about John MacArthur, or you'll find the book. Either way, it will be interesting. Read it and apply it. Do it. You're going to have to go to war against this. You're going to have to replace those thoughts. By the way, you're not just going to kill those thoughts of anger. You're going to have to replace them with love. And that comes through one process only. It's called sanctification. You know that. But it happens faster. The more we participate in it by doing what God tells us to do, so the next time somebody annoys you, stop and ask yourself a question. Why? What, what inside of me is causing me to be furious at this person for taking the last piece of chocolate cake? Why, why am I mad at this person? And it's not just that you, you'll be inclined to go, well, yeah, it's because they always take the last piece of cake. They always leave the crust at the end of the loaf for somebody else. They never take the crust. They always take the middle piece. No, that's not, that's not the examination. Why would I be so upset that, so, that I didn't get a piece of cake? Oh, I guess I think I deserve a piece of cake. Guess I need my thinking adjusted. I deserve wrath. Okay, losing a piece of chocolate cake, not so much of a big deal. Examine your heart. Apply truth to lies. Confess your sins that are going inside of you and know that as you work synergistically with the Holy Spirit, you can overcome your anger problem. And hey, here's something that could really help. I'm telling you, get face-to-face -face at wretched.org slash prayer or pray. Wretched.org slash pray. Face-to-face, -face, praying the scriptures for intimate worship you go and pray better, and it's going to help you. You will have longer. T if you do each one of these, I mean, you. and by the way, let me just throw in this little caveat. This prayer book is brilliant because it leads you through adoration, confession, renewal, petition, intercession, affirmation, turn the page, thanksgiving, and a closing prayer. It can take you a long time to do it. And if on a particular day, 
Time runs short because you spent a whole lot of time saying adoration and confession. I just got to blast through renewal and petition and intercession. I can't keep up with this thing. Don't do that. Let this, let this tool serve you. Don't become a slave to a book and an outline for prayer. Let it serve you, and it will. And it will grow you so much because it's praying the Bible back to God. And you would be confessing things like this. The refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but you, Lord, you test the heart. And it encourages you to ask the Spirit to search your heart and reveal any areas of unconfessed sin. Acknowledge these to the Lord and thank him for his forgiveness. Come on. That is, that, it's, it's like fertilizer, turbo fertilizer. Get your copy, Praying the Scriptures, face-to-face, wretched.org slash pray, wretched.org slash prayer. It is one of the means of grace that God will use to grow you like nobody's business, and you can have hope that his word has power, and you do not have to continue being angry. And until tomorrow, go serve your king. Hey, hey Todd. sweet. Take her on the block a few times. Who's a good girl? You're not because nobody does good. No, not one. Romans 5 says we're born in sin and iniquity, no, and our no, hearts no, are deceitful no. and wicked. You know that if you'd use the law, which brings about the knowledge of sin.